Okay. What I would like to say as well is I'm not trying to recreate a wheel. I'm not trying to undermine current academic study. But I see current academic study in philosophy of therapy as seriously flawed. I'm not saying that it can't help. I'm just saying that it's seriously flawed. I'd like to get back on topic and uh, talk about fight or flight, body, danger, adrenaline. You've seen uh, fight or flight in the body and adrenaline and the subconscious mind um, at work when you've seen a father or an individual escape certain death by a sudden quick action. Uh, say, for example, uh, jumping, out of a, um, uh, jumping out of the way of a car that's coming on the freeway, uh, maybe saving a child, things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first describe what's going on and how that happens, and I'm going to give you another way to view. Uh, they're all over YouTube, too. So I'm going to uh, uh, give you uh, another angle to look at all those videos. So uh, first, what, what I'd like to do is uh, tell you basically uh, what, what's happening. Uh, when the body enters fight or flight mode, uh, the subconscious mind uh, acting at hypothetical 90% of awareness and the conscious mind at 10% awareness. Now, there's people who might not agree with that or understand that or maybe even like 99 versus 1%, you know, if you're into yoga and spirituality and all that. Okay. So moving forward, what I'd like to do is uh, describe and bring home to you so that you can understand this whole process and how it relates. And we're going to go to this graph here. And I'm going to describe uh, PTSD uh, in a simple auto accident. So basically, we've all been in an auto accident in, in, in some shape or form. And we've all felt that, uh, that spike of, of adrenaline. The energy, you see this tick right here? So when the auto accident occurs, the body, you know, forearm, tense up, everything. The body goes into fight or flight. So the conscious mind immediately sees it, right? When it sees it, the subconscious mind automatically, the second conscious mind sees it, subconscious mind shuts down conscious mind to zero, subconscious mind goes into 100% control, right, and shoots adrenaline to the moon, okay? Now, I know you felt that. I felt it, okay? All right. So right now, the, the subconscious mind and the conscious mind have basically separated. Now they're still connected with, you know, think of a, think of glue on both sides of your hand. You go like this and there's still like, you know, hair strings, you know, to both. So they never completely detach. Nothing is felt when that happens. It's just boom, body, body goes into fight or flight, separates. Okay. While the conscious mind is at zero state, the subconscious mind is now 100% and it's now protecting everything. It's now in fight or flight. And as it relates to this particular mechanism, it's adrenaline that the body is using. Strength, speed, strength, speed of all bodily functions. Okay. Now, what, what's really critical to understand here is that now we're dealing with time. What is the time of the adrenaline? What's the time of the event? Well, when it comes to adrenaline, the body only gets a, a shot. It's like, boom, to the moon. But in an auto accident, in other situations, um, you know, the, we need more adrenaline. But it's not there. It doesn't have enough, okay? So this is the time of, this is T for time of the event, okay? So once the adrenaline spikes up and the separation happens and the subconscious mind takes control of the entire mechanism of the body through fight or flight for human survival, something very critical happens, okay? And that is this. After the event, and you know this from an auto accident, there's a time delay, right? Okay, that time delay, which, which is right here, After the, at, you can see that I hope, okay. After the initial spike of adrenaline, the separation of the subconscious mind taking over the body and separation from the conscious mind, it now needs to come back. The conscious mind and the conscious mind are, are going to now try to reconnect. That's painful, isn't it? Okay. If, 
If it were painful for the subconscious mind and the conscious mind to separate, what would happen in the event of that auto accident? The conscious mind would feel that pain of the separation and not allow it to happen. Okay? And then the body would not be able to go into fight or flight or human survival and, and it would die. It, it just it wouldn't be able to protect itself fast enough. So there's no pain from separation of subconscious and conscious mind. All right. PTSD. I'm going to draw this with green. PTSD is the time process that has to do with the time of length of time of the abuse, the age of your ability to understand and 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 you know organize your thoughts and and get the abuse and the severity of the abuse. So in this particular auto accident, there's a time delay. You get out of your car, you're, you, the, the fog. Okay, what the fog is, is the fog and this dizziness is the conscious mind not understanding what just occurred because it was shut down. And as the conscious mind tries to assess with emotions and feelings what is happening, it can't because the conscious, because the subconscious mind separated. Then magic happens. The green is PTSD. Okay, PTSD, well, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, is the acronym that was made for all of those feelings and, and things that are going on with you after something bad happens. But that's not what PTSD is. I mean, I mean it, it is, but that's not what PTSD is. PTSD is the subconscious mind and the conscious mind trying to reconnect. The conscious mind is going to feel the brain and the body connection is now going to feel the pain and the suffering and everything that happened while the subconscious mind took over so that it could go into fight or flight, human survival, and save the body. And that connection, that subconscious mind, calling upon the conscious mind to remember what happened is extremely painful. And the subconscious mind is battling this. The conscious mind has one kryptonite ability. And this is dramatic. The kryptonite, okay, that the conscious mind has over the superpowers of the subconscious mind is to be able to suppress it. But we all know that that's not all power because those strings are still connected. PTSD is your, your subconscious mind trying to get the conscious mind in singularity and unity. And the unfortunate thing is, it's going to bring all the pain with it. The only way, the only way to get through it is to allow the conscious mind to speak to the subconscious mind as it tries to reconnect and heal. And the only thing the conscious mind has in its quiver, in its ammunition, is to talk, to cry, to feel through the muscles and bones and brain the pain. If you call upon the conscious mind and beat down the subconscious mind, this is what the PTSD looks like.
and I'll do it in two fashions. One, speed, quick healing, and two, suffering. The minute you were in that auto accident, if you immediately went to someone there, and you've seen people do this, hug the police officers, hug the other person, Though what those individuals are doing is allowing the subconscious to reconnect with the, with the conscious mind in, in, I mean, a speed that is so healthy, it's not even funny. And their timeline for PTSD is that. Okay, that's good enough. Okay. Now, if you are not and don't want to, meaning you've experienced shame, don't cry. It's not man to cry. Get over it. Which is what all first responders are. This Superman, I have to, I can't go save someone's life and then and and and, and, and then come and cry. No, that doesn't work. But it's exactly what needs to happen. So the second way that this person, the same person, could extend their PSD, PTSD, is to get out of the car and walk around like nothing happened. Walk around. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Hello, officer. My name is Marty. What identification do you need? We've all done it. The PTSD for that person. Watch this. They are elongating the time. The conscious mind is kryptonite beating down on the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is trying so hard and it can't compete with that power. Right? Okay. Now remember, at this point in time, it, it's, it's back to normal. 90% subconscious mind, 10% conscious mind. So that 10% becomes extremely powerful and it pushes out the PTSD for a time frame. So that person who gets out of the car and says, hello, hello, are you okay? Are you okay? Hello, officer. You know, and fills all the paperwork has now extended that time period for the onset of PTSD. And that PTSD looks like that. This delay in time between the acceptance by the conscious mind that something bad has happened is critical to your ability to move past this event. The secondary issue with regards to PSD and healing as it relates to adrenaline strength and speed, human survival, fight or flight, body danger, is to share with loved ones, family, anybody who, this is critical, who will not ask questions. When you ask questions, what you are doing is you are, you are talking to the conscious mind and you are delaying that individual's ability to reconnect and go through the pain. This is what happens when you ask questions. The conscious mind and the subconscious mind are doing this and you're crying and, 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 oh my God, unloading all these deep emotions. Watch. Question. Boom. Conscious mind has to answer. It hasn't healed yet. It can't. Retraction. Person starts talking again. You'll you will actually watch them try to get back to that healing point. And then when they've talked enough, suddenly you'll, you'll see them change and you'll see that subconscious mind come back again. And they'll cry and they'll say something. You will feel the need to ask them questions and, and do things. It's all wrong. Let them talk, cry, hug, emotion for eternity. That's the right choice. So, as, as, a, a, as anybody associated with, with this situation, I've given you, you know, what's happening, why it's happening. Uh, there, there are some underlying points um, uh, inside of what I've talked about, but, uh, but I'll get another chance to go over that later. Uh, and it's, um, um, well, one, one more thing I'd like to talk about. See down here where it says inversion? Okay, inversion is where uh, 
an individual is a first responder and or in serious bodily body danger and, and, and the body calls, the subconscious mind calls upon fight or flight and it's, it's in that state for a very, very long time. I mean, we're talking like days and weeks, okay? People who, you know, fight overseas or in the military, you know, things like that, okay? Or um, uh, firemen uh, or, you know, and, and when they have to go on scene, you know, it's hours and hours, okay? So what happens is the, the, the subconscious mind takes over initially and then, and then it starts to, to separate because the danger is over. Conscious mind starts to come in and you go into robot mode, you know, jaws of life or, you know, all this kind of stuff, what you've been trained to do, okay? Um, muscle memory. Muscle memory is conscious mind. Muscle memory. Okay. All right. So basically inversion is where the subconscious mind doesn't allow the uh, subconscious mind to come back quick enough. And then it starts to harden. And then the only way to undo that is for uninterrupted expression of the subconscious mind outward through the conscious mind through voice so we can hear it and feel the pain of what happened. Okay, now we're talking about one event, not multiple events. We're just talking about one event. When it talks about multiple events stacked on top of each other, I'll get into that at a later time. Okay, uh, another video. Okay, so that's basically uh, the, um, the part on uh, human survival, fight or flight, body danger, adrenaline, st strength and speed, uh, PTSD, complex PTSD, time, age, severity, and what's happening with the conscious and subconscious mind as the separation and the reconnect occurs. So I hope that uh, you might have questions. I don't know. Um, you can't answer them. You're not in front of me. <laughs> um, but uh, I uh, hope that helps. And uh, well, now uh, I'm going to go into the, into the, uh, the next step, which is uh, talking about human survival, fight or flight uh, in the mind as abuse. Uh, with regards to family, uh, marriages, and friends, and what we deal with on a daily basis. And uh, yeah, I'll get into that next. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the, uh, the next series, or the next part. Hi, welcome back, and uh, continue on with our Human Survival Fight or Flight uh, series. In the other video, uh, basically it was, it was much easier to, uh, to, to talk about. The reason why that that is, is because we were dealing with, with one mechanism in, in adre adrenaline. And we were also dealing with something that everyone can, even if they never have been in an auto accident, can at least uh, sympathize and, and, and understand. I mean, that's like, you know, common nature, especially when you live in California. I mean, anywhere, but all right. I now have to go into something a little bit more complicated, but I'll make it simple and, and simplify it uh, exactly as I hope that I did uh, for this side. All right. Uh, the mind is obviously very complex. And one of the things that the academics did uh, that I disagree with is whenever the academics or the therapists uh, get confused about a person and say, well, how can you have this trait and this trait and this trait? Well, it must be something new. Well, I disagree with that. Uh, when you have a narcissistic personality disorder, when you have antisocial and you have avoidance, you, you, when you look at those, you, well, you read about avoidance, well, I do that, you know, but I've been married for 40 years or, you know what I mean? And, and I think you get it. I don't agree with all of these different things. Uh, I certainly don't agree with narcissistic personality disorder uh, and, and, and malignant narcissist being in the same thing. Um, I, I, I think malignant narcissist, uh, should be in its own separate thing, and uh, all of the other traits that are that are that are not malignant but are, are this way uh, should be under another description. And avoidance and antisocial uh, and those traits should all be lumped into one name. So you would have four. Okay, uh, you would have. Um, well, you guessed it. You would have antisocial personality disorder. You would have malignant narcissism, and you would have sociopath, and you would have psychopath. Now remember, I'm not trying to create the wheel here. I'm just trying to make things more simple.